If you're looking to become a web developer in 2022 and more specifically change careers into web development, then this video is for you. Tens of thousands of people have done this, including myself, without any past experience, without a computer science degree, just a plan of action and persistence. In this video, I wanna help you out with that plan by providing a blueprint for you to follow. And this blueprint is gonna answer three questions. What do you need to learn? where exactly you can learn it, and how do you land the job. So if that piques your interest, keep watching. What's up everybody? If you haven't seen any of my videos in the past, my name is Travis. I'm a self-taught software developer that learned to code six years ago at the age of 34, married with four kids and a full-time job. If I can do it, you can do it. So one of the keys to this whole process is having a very specific plan. You can't find like random YouTube videos that teach HTML and then you find some more that teach like JavaScript. You can't jump around like that. You need a plan from A to Z. And you need to make sure you stay with that plan. You don't stray from it. And finally, it's gonna take you at least six months. Now I can say in 2022, it's a little bit harder to become a web developer than when I learned. And that just means the technology has changed a little bit and you have to learn a couple of extra things. But like I said, it's gonna take at least six months of hard work. And if you think about it, that is a small amount of time in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if you're like 30, six months later, you're still gonna be 30. So try to look at it in the big picture. So we're gonna start this video out with number one, what do you need to learn? So the traditional web development route will open up many, many doors of opportunities for you. And it all begins with HTML. Now, nobody's looking for an, an HTML specialist to hire, to bring in. You're just expected to know it. It's the backbone of all web pages. Web pages cannot exist without it. So learn it. It takes like a week and it's a lot of fun. Once you start writing HTML and building your own web page, things start to click that you didn't know about when you used the internet in the past. Second, you need to learn CSS. Now CSS is what makes your HTML look pretty. So it's choosing the fonts and the colors and rearranging things on the page, making it responsive so that it works on your, your mobile phone and lots of other things that I'm not getting into. But just know that the CSS makes your web page beautiful. That's how you style your HTML. Third, you need to learn JavaScript. This is, and this is gonna be the doorway into your programming career. Now, HTML and CSS are not programming languages. HTML is like a markup language, CSS, what is it, a syntax? I don't know. But anyway, JavaScript is gonna be your first programming language. And the concepts you learn here are gonna carry on into other languages and technologies. So you're gonna learn about variables and loops and functions, methods, parameters, all the things that other programming languages share. So this is very, very important. And it's at this point you're gonna be largely focused on what they call the DOM, the Document Object Model, which is a programming interface for web documents. Basically, it's like all of the HTML you can manipulate on the web pages. So you can target certain IDs or classes and make it do stuff. That's like the foundation of JavaScript. So you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of time there. Now, while you're learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you'll also, at some point there, want to get introduced to Git, GitHub, and the terminal. Now, Git is a version control system that allows you to control versioning in your code. So you can make some changes, you can check it in, you can make some more changes, you can check it in, and you can see the differences in your code as you progress. Now, GitHub is a place that you can send that to on the web where other developers can interact with it. This is central to every programming job and you'll 100% be expected to know it. Now, the terminal is gonna be your best friend. As programmers, we spend every day in the terminal. We gotta know basic terminal commands and how to get around in it, so that's mandatory. And also, while you're learning these three, and actually, while you're learning the whole path, you're gonna be building real projects. That's the whole point of this thing. You want to build real projects that you can show an employer to prove that you know what you're doing and to give you practice. But here's kind of where the road forks. Once you learn JavaScript, what do you do? And this is where a lot of people have different opinions. My opinion is that you stick with JavaScript. Now, why do I say that? Well, JavaScript is not just for your browser. JavaScript is now a full stack language. You can do front end development, back end development, you can build websites, web apps, mobile apps, games, blockchain development, desktop apps, machine learning, cloud computing, so many things with JavaScript. It's so versatile. So some people will say at this point you should check out C Sharp or you should check out Python. 
Lots of great options you could choose from, but hey, you just spent your time learning JavaScript. Why not stick with it and really nail it down and let that be your path into web development? So that's where I'm gonna go from here. And before I take you down that path, let me mention one thing. There's a JavaScript library out there called jQuery. Everybody's trying to get away from it, but you just can't. It's in everything. So you should spend a very small amount of time getting comfortable with how jQuery works. It's not something you wanna use a lot, but you're gonna see it in like every job. At some point it's gonna come up and you're gonna be expected just to know it. So spend a little time there. So now that you understand JavaScript and you've done a little jQuery just to knock it out, there's one more thing you need to look into and that's ES6, which is a newer syntax for JavaScript, but it's not really new, it's kind of the norm now. And you may have learned it while you're learning JavaScript, but if not, you should become familiar with things like template literals, spread operators, arrow functions, classes, things that were introduced in ES6. Because like I said, it's the norm. So if you didn't learn that while you were learning JavaScript, make sure you do a little detour and check that out. So you've done HTML, you've done CSS, you've done JavaScript. You've been all in the front end. And it's my recommendation to stay with JavaScript. So the next logical step is React. Now React is a front end library, a front end JavaScript library that's super, super popular and a lot of fun in my opinion. And if you're looking for JavaScript jobs out there, like 70% of the listings are gonna ask that you know React. So at this point in the journey, start learning React. And now that you're done with React, we come to another fork in the road. Some people are like, stay with front end and just nail down the last couple of things and get the job. But in my opinion, you wanna spend a little time in the back end also. You may go for front end jobs, but they're gonna expect you to know some things about databases or APIs. So I would suggest the next step be Node.js. And guess what? It's still JavaScript. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. So it's for back end. It allows you to run JavaScript outside of the browser. And that makes JavaScript super powerful. So you should spend a little time getting to know Node.js and how things work in the backend development realm. And going this route is gonna introduce you to APIs. Now this is one of the technologies that I think is mandatory for you to learn that I didn't think was when I was learning. Everything now is an API. Everything connects via an API and employers are gonna want you with React to be able to talk to APIs and they'll probably want you to build APIs with Node and Express. Express, and Express is just a very minimal web application framework for JavaScript. And it kind of goes hand in hand with Node a lot. So you'll want to learn Node.js, you'll want to learn Express and how APIs work, and then that ultimately leads into databases. Now, a lot of times with Node, you'll be using NoSQL databases like MongoDB, but you should learn the basics of SQL databases, how to query SQL databases, how the tables and rows and structures are laid out. You don't have to become an expert, of course, and you don't really have to get too deep into it, but you need to learn the basics because that's gonna be expected of you as well. So Node.js will eventually lead you to API development, um, which is really important. Things like REST principles, REST APIs, you gotta know that stuff. It'll also lead you to databases, which again, you don't have to get too deep into, but you should have a surface level understanding of how they work. Now, the last two things I wanna talk about are not really technology related. One of those is building unique projects. So we talked about real projects. That's gonna be the projects you're building with whatever course you're taking. Unique projects are projects that you come up with. Here's an example. Um, when I was learning React, I, did a, I took a couple of courses and did like the beginning of a couple of courses and got fed up with the basics. Like I got the basics down, but I ended up quitting somewhere in the middle of a course. And then I would come back and I'd start the basics again. I kind of got sick of that. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick an app, like I'm just gonna come up with an app and I'm gonna build it from scratch myself. So I decided I'm gonna build a note taker app, an app where I can type, type a bunch of notes and then save it and then list my notes and all that. So I opened up a fresh VS Code instance and just started coding, ran into all kind of roadblocks, had to check the documentation, had to really do a lot of digging, but I came out of that not only with a unique app that I could show an employer, like, hey, I built this and it's, it's mine, it's not some tutorials, but also the struggle that I put in, hitting these roadblocks taught me a lot. And I credit that project to my current state of being really comfortable in React code. That's an example of a unique project. 
and maybe this should come later in your studies um, while you're doing something like React or Node or APIs or something. If you come up with something neat, like, hey, what about a bike rental app, like a bike rental in the city? I'm just going to come up with something. It don't have to be like all the bells and whistles, but come up with something unique and really kind of struggle with it, wrestle with it and make some something or a couple of things unique to show off. That's what I mean by that. And then the final thing I want to talk about is your social media presence. This is very, very important from day one until the end and onward. So places like Twitter, there's tons and tons of people doing the same thing as you, learning web development. Get on Twitter, let people know, hey, I'm learning web development, I'm in this stage, and a bunch of people will jump in with you and you'll have lots of support. That's Twitter. LinkedIn, also be on LinkedIn because that's where the employers are. Be on LinkedIn, be active, be making connections throughout the whole journey that will help you when it comes time to get a job. And one more optional thing, I'll say it last. Um, what I did was I created a blog at the beginning and I blogged my journey. And I ended up starting this YouTube channel, just sharing everything that I knew. And after freelancing for a couple of years, um, I landed my first job with a company that hired me solely on the fact that they liked my drive, the fact that I was publishing blog posts and putting things out there, showing my passion for development. And then they could see that the stuff I was writing, I obviously knew what I was talking about. So that's another thing to consider. It was very important for me, might be important for you, might not. And guess what? That's it. That's all you got to learn. Simple, right? No, you're probably thinking, this guy just threw like 25 technologies at me. I don't know what half of it means. This blueprint is useless. Well, I'm going to clear it all up for you in the next section. It'll all make sense then. And in this section, I want to ask the question, where exactly can I learn all of this? So we have the blueprint. Now we need to go out and figure out where do I learn it all? And again, you're probably thinking it's going to be like 10 different places. It's going to be Skillshare. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be blog posts, all these different things that I got to jump out and find. But you're wrong there too, because it actually can be all learned in one single course. And no, it's not my course. It's, it's actually a course that if I was doing it all over again, I would take, and it would be the only course I take. And I would spend all six months in that one place. And this course can be found on Udemy, and it's called The Complete 2022 Web Development Bootcamp by my favorite instructor, Angela Yu. Now, if you've never taken any of her classes, you're missing out. She is a really, really, really talented instructor that can really break things down for people like you and me. And hey, I need a lot of breaking down, okay? But this course, actually, let me share my screen real quick. So here's the course. It says it's 129 bucks, and I have people telling me like, hey, you're, you said it was only 10 bucks. I clicked the link, and now it's like 100 bucks. That's not me doing that. That's Udemy. Udemy gives deals like every other week. And in fact, I have a blog post where I kind of go over three ways that I'm almost always able to find coupons. But if you look around enough, you'll find a coupon. Never buy a Udemy course at 100 bucks. Never buy it for over 20 bucks. If you look for coupons and you can't find one anywhere, just wait a couple of days, they'll have another sale. But anyway, this course has everything you need to learn. It says that it's 65 hours. So you think like, hey, I'm gonna take a week off of work. I'm just gonna spend 40 hours and then I'll knock it out the week after that. No, you can't do that. You really gotta wrestle through this stuff. You gotta spend the whole six plus months here. Of course, there'll be supplements and things, but spend the bulk of it here. She'll teach you everything you need to know. Now, as far as our blueprint, it covers everything. Let's test that. So I'm gonna bring up my blueprint. Uh, let's see. So we got HTML here. We got CSS here. We got JavaScript here, introduction to JavaScript, intermediate JavaScript, DOM, uh, some games. So one thing that she does really well is she has lots of great projects that are that really teach you the concepts. Uh, here's advanced JavaScript and DOM manipulation. So that's gonna get you through JavaScript and the DOM. Here's jQuery. It's like uh, 53 minutes. That's all you need of jQuery. Um, ES6 is mentioned up here, introduction to JavaScript ES6. So that's covered from the beginning. If you keep going down, you'll see there is a section on React.js. There's React. What about Node? Well, up here, you'll see Node.js with Express, with APIs. Go down a little further, and hey, there's SQL. There's MongoDB, there's Mongoose, so there's your databases. Down here again, you see this uh, build your own RESTful API from scratch. 
And finally, if we go back up, we see somewhere the Unix command line. And if we check out the projects, we got the Dicey game, the Simon game, we got a blog website, we got a blog website upgrade. Uh, we're going to build an API from scratch. And then there's a, uh, some Web3 stuff, which you probably shouldn't get into at this point. But it looks like we've checked everything off the list. Everything in our blueprint can be learned here. Now, there's one other course that you might consider if for some reason you don't like her course. There's one by Colt Steele, and I'll put links to these below. He has a course called the Web Developer Bootcamp 2022 that's basically the same thing. He's also a very talented instructor. I've taken his Python course, his React course, and I like him too. I just prefer Angela for this kind of stuff. But if you come down, here's HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript. He also does React. Um, I'm not sure he does Node or not. Yeah, he does Node. So all of it's there too. That's a secondary option that you can take. So the benefit here is that it keeps you on course. So if you, take, you buy this course, and every time you're, you're doing your studies, you just come back to this course, you won't be sidetracked with all of this other stuff out there that looks fun also. You'll be learning in one place. So that's what I recommend. If I was doing it all over again, I would grab her course, and that would be my main course of study. So that answers what we need to learn, and where do we learn it? The only thing that's left is how do we actually land the job? Now there's three things that I would actually say here. So number one, to land the job, you need to know how to code. I mean, that's the whole point of the blueprint. And you also need to be able to demonstrate that to an employer. And you do that with projects. So you're building projects with the course and you're building those one to two unique projects that you can show off and talk through. But you also need to be prepared for that coding interview where they actually sit you down and give you some algorithms to prove to them that you know your stuff. So you don't have to worry about that at the beginning. Like some people are like, I don't even want to start this because I don't know what I'm going to do then. Start it, learn to code. And then as you get toward the end, start doing some of these algorithm trainings. And the best place to do that is at Free Code Camp. Now Free Code Camp, a lot of people come here to learn to code and it's a wonderful resource. For me, it's more of a piecemeal thing. I just come here for certain things and I leave. And one of the things I really, really liked was the algorithms. So if you come to the main page here and go to JavaScript algorithms and data structures certification, you got 300 hours here to practice with. So maybe like an hour a week, two hours a week, just come, come here and do some basic algorithms. So, um, well, actually this is JavaScript. This is 300 hours of JavaScript, I guess not algorithms, but if you come down to basic algorithm scripting, so this is like the basic algorithm. So you should work through these, like how to reverse a string, how to truncate a string, uh, those kind of things. And then further down, there's intermediate algorithm scripting. So like sum all numbers in a range, missing letters. It's a lot of these challenges that prepare your brain for passing these technical interviews. And there's a lot here and they go from pretty easy to pretty hard. So wrestle through them and you'll be prepared for those interviews. The second thing I want to say, and I've touched on this earlier, is to make connections along the way. Be active on Twitter, be active on LinkedIn, and be actively pursuing connections with other developers. So that when it comes time to land the job, you have people to reach out to or people to, or an audience where you can make it known that you're looking for a job. Because a lot of people, they get on Twitter or they get on LinkedIn and they say something like, hey, I'm a JavaScript developer looking for a job. If anybody's got any openings they know of, let me know. A lot of times those posts get tens, 20, 50 comments of people that are like, hey, we're hiring. Hey, we're hiring. So be making connections along the way from day one. And then finally, the last thing I want to say is you're probably going to end up applying a lot. It's going to be really discouraging. Um, it may even take months to land that first, first job once you're ready. But keep at it because you will land the job eventually. Send out tons of interviews. Try not to get discouraged. Try to stay positive in the process and it'll pay off. Another thing you could consider while you're waiting to really land that job, consider freelancing a little bit. Find some people in your area that need help with web development or go on Upwork or reach out to local agencies or agencies online and see if they have overflow work you can do. That's kind of what I did. I ended up getting on Upwork and got in contact with an agency there that hired me like 30 hours a week doing web development. And that was kind of stable for me. And I did that and I ended up freelancing off of that for like two years. If you're waiting to hear back from companies and you're sending out resumes and you're just kind of getting frustrated, try to make some money 
off of what you do with side hustles until you land that job. And as I mentioned earlier, optionally, you can document your journey, start a website, and that may give you some brownie points as well. So that's it. That's all I have today, guys. I hope that was beneficial. I've given you the blueprint and I've given you the course to take in the actions when it comes time to land the job. If you like this video, click that thumbs up and let's talk more about it down in the comments. Have a good day.